As excitement surrounding Final Fantasy VII Rebirth's imminent launch continues to build, an increasing amount of details are being revealed about the action RPG, with the developer consistently offering details on everything from its setting and its world to its playable characters and more. Over the last few weeks and across multiple features, we've covered a great many of these details, but there's plenty that we haven't covered yet. And with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth's launch now right around the corner, here that's exactly what we'll be doing. Sephiroth's Combat Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is set to feature a number of playable characters, but though some will be permanent party members, others will be playable in specific sections of the game. In that latter group, Sephiroth is obviously the most prominent, who will be playable in the game's flashback section, which we now know is going to be the first chapter. And what exactly can we expect from his combat mechanics? Well, the developer describes Sephiroth as strong, extremely skilled, and highly experienced. His basic attacks will see him dishing out powerful, aggressive combos, while holding down the square button will also let you use basic ranged attacks. Pressing the triangle button, meanwhile, will let you unleash powerful finishers, which, incidentally, will vary depending on how many hits you doled out in the preceding combo. Finally, entering retaliation mode will allow Sephiroth to parry and counter incoming blows with in place of basic attacks. Sephiroth's Abilities the developer has revealed two of the abilities that Sephiroth will have access to, which of course will require your ATB bars to be filled up. First, there's Zanshin, which will see him send rending waves of energy at his foes, as the developer puts it. The second ability, Hell's Gate, will see him leaping into the air and descending down at his foe with an impaling attack, a move that may give fans of the original Final Fantasy VII some distressing flashbacks. Sephiroth's Limit Break like all playable characters in the game, Sephiroth will, of course, have a limit break as well. Dubbed Octo Slash, Sephiroth's limit break will see him unleashing a furious flurry of eight deadly swipes of his weapon at an enemy. This is an attack that will be quite familiar to you if you've ever played Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII, where it was a usable move, or even Final Fantasy VII Remake, where Sephiroth uses Octo Slash against Cloud and Co. Sephiroth's Synergies Synergies are a major new combat mechanic being introduced in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Sephiroth is going to get his slice of the pie here as well. His synergy ability is Double Helix, where not only will he and Cloud unleash significant damage on enemies together, but will also benefit themselves in different ways, with Cloud's limit level being raised and Sephiroth gaining unlimited MP. Meanwhile, the less powerful, more regular synergy skill called Dual Blade Dance will allow Sephiroth and his partner to team up and dole out three successive close-ranged attacks. More synergies. Let's move on from Sephiroth and speak a little bit more about other characters in the game, specifically a few of the many synergy ability combos that the developer has revealed so far. There's Firework Blade, Cloud and Aerith's synergy ability, where Aerith charges up magic, which Cloud then uses to fire off a ranged attack. Then there's Moogle Dunk Shot, which involves Tifa, and you guessed it, Kate Sith. As its name suggests, with this ability, Tifa will grab Kate Sith's Moogle partner and smash it into an enemy. More details on summons. The developer has promised a wide variety of summons in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and though we don't know every single one that will be in the game, quite a few have been confirmed and briefly detailed. There's Titan, for instance, who will be able to use area of effect attacks like Boulder Hurl, which does exactly what its name suggests, and Earth and Fury, where Titan summons massive pillars of rock up through the earth to attack foes. The massive red dragon Bahamut Arisen, meanwhile, is a particularly agile summon who can shoot out explosive bomb light magic using Umbral Bombardment to attack a wide range of foes, or of course, good old Giga Flare. Then there's Phoenix, who can fly about the battlefield, heal you and your companions using abilities like Arise, or scorch enemies to a crisp with something like Rebirth Flame. Affinity System The bonds between its key characters were a big part of the original Final Fantasy VII, and true to that, Rebirth will feature an affinity system that will determine Cloud's bond with each individual character. From engaging in certain special activities with characters to picking the right dialogue choices at certain times, there will be several ways to strengthen Cloud's bonds with his friends, and how far you advance on that front with each of them will determine which of them will accompany Cloud during a special sequence at the Gold Saucer that fans of the original will remember very well. 
Additional characters who weren't available as options in the scene have also been added in Rebirth, the developers have also confirmed. Sid Sid Highwinds may have sat out Final Fantasy VII Remake, but he'll be entering the fray when its sequel rolls out, though unlike in the original game, he isn't going to be a full party member, for now at least. Players will encounter Sid later in the game, but he isn't going to be a playable character, nor will he be an AI-controlled fighter during combat as Red 13 was in the first game. Sid will, however, accompany the party after he encounters them, but the aid he will provide will mostly come in the form of flying them around in his plane, the Tiny Bronco. Biggs Final Fantasy VII Remake's setting brought forward new things in a number of key ways, with one of them being that Biggs ended up surviving Shinra's attack on the Sector VII plate in Midgar, even though that was where he died in the original Final Fantasy VII. In Rebirth, Biggs will return, and though we have no clue what to expect from him and how heavily he will be involved in the setting, based on the brief details given out by the developer, he's going to be hell-bent on getting his revenge against Shinra. More Characters Cloud and company will be crossing paths with a number of other key characters throughout their journey. Dine, one of Baird's closest and oldest allies, will be introduced. Now a wanted man and having a gun for an arm, similar to Baird, he will come hand in hand with major revelations about Baird's past. Then there's Dio, the mustachioed and muscular owner of the Gold Saucer, Solemn Gus, the flamboyant and smooth-talking kingpin of Coral Prison, Remna Wave Towers. With Final Fantasy VII Rebirth embracing an open-world structure, it is also embracing a popular design trope in the form of towers. Dubbed Remna Wave Towers, you'll find one of these in each region, and activating them will not only give you a wide view of the area around you, it will also mark a number of side activities, quests, and research activities on the map that you can take on to further assist Chadley with his research. Chocobo Stops While traversing the world of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, you'll often come across stray Chocobo chicks who will beckon you to follow them. If you do that, they'll lead you to broken Chocobo Stops. Fixing, which will not only get you a golden plume from the chocobo as a reward, but will also unlock the stop as a fast travel point for you to use whenever you want. No DLC plans. Final Fantasy VII Remake got a new post-launch episode in the form of Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrates Episode Intermission, but it doesn't look like the developer has any plans to stick to that trend with Rebirth, as confirmed by the developer in an interview with Vandal. While plans could change down the line, as it stands, it looks like the development team will be moving straight to the Remake's trilogy final installment after Rebirth is out of the gate. And that brings us to the end of this video. A quick request before we conclude, we upload new videos every single day, and if you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps us out. Also, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon so that you can receive daily video updates. Thanks for watching.